Yo, welcome back to 40 TV. I'm your host, 40. So exciting news, guys. I have redone 40 TV's website, bringing it more up to date. It will be updated on a normal basis. I know those of you who are watching me on YouTube have seen that I've been pumping out videos, and I'm going to keep doing that with an emphasis on looking for freelance projects. So if you need something in the realms of editing, in the realms of special effects, motion graphics, uh, animated intros, uh, you name it, I'm your man, right? So hit me up, and I'd, I'm, I'm happy to hear about your project. However, today's video is about a plugin I created for Final Cut Pro X a long time ago and didn't really release, right? I think it was available on the website, but I never put out a video explaining what it did. I didn't put any description, etc. So yeah, this, this plugin never sold. Originally, it was uh, priced at uh, $20. I've switched my pricing over to euros because I'm living in Europe, and I'm dropping the price on this plugin down to 10 euros. So obviously, that's a savings. Whether you're paying in euros or dollars, etc., it's a big savings. Let me show you what happens. If you've purchased it from the website where you can go to 40tv.com slash shop, then after you purchase it, you will get the zip file. You'll double click on the zip file and you'll have an installer here. Double click on the installer. You have to agree to the license agreement. After you agree to the license agreement, click on install. I've already installed it, so I don't have to do it again. I'm gonna click on quit. If you run into any problems during the installation process, it may be because Gatekeeper is stopping certain installs from certain uh, software manufacturers. Uh, and so you may have to disable Gatekeeper in order for the installation to work, or you may not. It depends. If you run into problems, search on YouTube how to disable Gatekeeper, or shoot me an email, and I'll send you a link on how to do it. Huh? So we're inside Final Cut Pro right now, right? I have a still loaded. However, this could be a video. This could be uh, anything, right? And what we're going to do is drop Chat uh, Bubbles Pro on top of it. Chat Bubbles Pro is a generator. So over here in my Generators tab, which it's already selected, I'm going to type in Chat even though you can see it and boom it's right here right I'm gonna drag this down drop it and immediately it says cool because this plugin is cool yo <laughs> so with it loaded right here if we click on over here in the inspector to the generators tab we'll notice under the bubble selector we have 25 bubbles to choose from I'm just gonna start going down so you can see them all and then I'll talk about the parameters right so the cool thing is, and you might be saying, hey, cool is not fitting exactly, or the text is not fitting exactly in the bubble. I'm gonna show you how to change that, modify all of the settings. You can change the size of the bubbles, you can change the size of the font, et cetera, et cetera. And some of these are not exactly bubbles. Like for example, bubble number 25 is a film strip. This is a light bulb, right? But obviously for whatever needs you have here, in fact, bubble 17, maybe you wouldn't even include text. You can delete the text and you can just have these bubbles, right? No matter what it is, right? right? So, okay, we're almost through them. Probably I will show you on bubble 19 for the example of different settings that you can change within the plugin, huh? All right, so let's switch back over to bubble number 19. Bah, and here we go. So first off, you can switch the X and the Y of the bubble. If I click on this, notice that it added the little, uh, the little piece that's like from a comic book that would be saying it's coming out of your head. That uh, changes its orientation when you click on flip X. If you click on flip Y, then it changes it to be upside down. So maybe your character is on top or your person is on top and you want the bubble to come from the bottom. Boom, you do that, right? I'm going to go ahead and turn this off. I'm going to leave flip X on. And if I want to change my bubble color, all I have to do is come over here and make a selection. Let's Let's set it to 40 TV green, bam, and then there we go. Huh? Next, if we want to change position, we can adjust the X position here, bring the Y position up, right? And then you say, wait, we lost our text. No, we didn't. All we have to do is click and we drag that up. If we wanted to change the properties of the text, as soon as we click on it, we're brought into the inspector of the text and we can change, you know, to a different type of text, right? So for example, hyperspeed, we can change our sizing, for example, and then click to reposition this. Obviously by dragging, it's making adjustments to this. If you wanted to change rotation, because obviously we can rotate this bubble, keep in mind the Z property is going to be the rotation that you want to change. I'm gonna press Apple Z to undo that and I'm gonna go back to the inspector. And obviously all of the text properties are available so you can make other changes to your text, like the spacing, et cetera, et cetera. And for example, this could be a paragraph of text. 
So for example, if we wanted this uh, chat bubble to have a paragraph of text, probably I'm gonna skip the rotation for a second, come down to scale, I'm gonna twirl this open. And if I just increase the scale of the Y, this is what would give us more space to add a paragraph of text. It doesn't have to say cool, it could say this is super cool because it's super cool, <laughs> or whatever you want it to say, right? I'm gonna go ahead and reset this property by coming over here, clicking on this arrow, now I've reset the scale property. Obviously, we can scale it uniformly by clicking on or uh, moving this right here, right? Making it smaller, making it larger. I'm going to press Apple Z on my keyboard to undo. And consequently, we can rotate this, right? And if we rotate it, of course, we're going to have to rotate the text too. I'm going to press Apple Z to undo, and I'm going to keep going down to the different properties, right? If you don't want a border, just uncheck this. If you do want a border, have it checked. We can change how thick that border is by the border width slider right here. We can also change if we want to have a different color. What if we want it to be black, right? So if we drop the border uh, thickness or the width down just a hair or halfway, and now we're, we're working with something cool. Obviously, in the text inspector or the properties, we can scroll down and we can look for outline. For example, if we wanted to outline this, we could change the color from red to black, and now that's fitting a little bit better, and then increase the width of the outline maybe to six, and now this is it's looking pretty nice, huh? You might, instead of a border or in addition to a border, want a drop shadow. If you turn it on here, bump up the opacity of that drop shadow by default, increase the distance, and now we're having this... Uh, this drop shadow, and we can change the angle of which the drop shadow is by clicking it and here and changing it. Obviously dragging the wheel or typing in a value, whatever you see fit, and it depends, you know, where this is positioned, where it would look best, etc. Now, if we come over here, we can apply transitions to this. So, and we can change the, the, the length of this. We can have this match up the length of the clip below, which it currently is, but let's say we want it to fade in our default excuse me, our default transition is a uh, cross dissolve. So if I press Command T, boom, I've added a cross dissolve on both sides. If I press spacebar on my keyboard, it just fades in in the beginning. Of course, we could change the length of these transitions. Uh, if we come in here, and I don't know why my zoom is not working at the moment. Come on, baby, what's going on? So if we say plus maybe uh, one second, now we've just made uh, <laughs> the piece underneath. I don't know what's going on. Uh, zoom in. Uh, so modify. No, view. Let's see. T -t -t zoom in, which is here. I don't know what's happening, huh? Maybe it's glitched out because I'm doing a screen recording. But if you zoom in, you can change the length of the transitions, of course. Guys, I hope you like this explanation, this tutorial. You find it useful. The plugin is available on the site right now for 10 euros. Go ahead and download it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Until next time, I'm out.